Hello and welcome back. This is the reboot of my Q&A series. I want to give a big thank you to Jacob Borg for asking the first question, which is, what is your opinion on the slingshot bench press? Uh, so before I get into that, you know, Jacob Borg, he's a, I believe, natural, awesome lifter. He has a page on Instagram, uh, goblin underscore gains. Definitely check him out, check out his training logs so you can get some insight into how he trains, uh, maybe apply a few things that he does to better your training. Anyways, instead of just giving him a quick one or two line reply on my opinion, I figured why not break it down into the pros and cons of the slingshot bench press. That way you guys can review, analyze, and decide for yourself whether you want to include the slingshot into your bench press training, or if you're already doing so, maybe you're going to want to remove it after hearing some of these cons. So I'm going to start off with the cons first, just to get the bad stuff out of the way. Uh, number one on the list is arguably the most important. Uh, the reason I don't really like the slingshot is because you're going to get less overall muscle gain or hypertrophy from doing that because of how it changes the resistance profile. The way that it does this is by making the weight lighter at the bottom. So say you have 225 pounds on the bar, as you lower it, that slingshot is going to stretch and stretch more and more and give you more assistance out of the bottom. So your pec fibers, you know, and your front delt fibers may only be pushing 185 pounds, whereas the slingshot is gonna make up the rest of that 40, so you can push 225 off of your chest. A lot of the newest research is actually finding that for pure hypertrophy results, putting as much tension as you can in the most lengthened position that you can, you know, obviously without involving your tendons and ligaments, having those be the limiting factor, but you know, as long as everything's healthy and you can get a healthy range of motion, get a deep stretch, that's going to give you the most muscle gain in the long run, rather than having a deep stretch position with less tension. Now, people may say, you know, that this is only going to apply for the front delts and the pecs, and that they can still get a great tricep stimulus with slingshot bench press. And, you know, that may be true, you know, you're using a heavy weight and the triceps do have to do a lot of the work here. But I believe you can get better results by maximizing tension in the stretched position on each muscle, which is why I'd rather approach it where you do, you know, say a raw bench press variation, pause bench press variation, or t-shirt touch bench press first. Then you move on to something like a JM press or a French press. And then last but not least, finish them off with some full range of motion extensions uh, where you're coming up all the way, preferably using like a dual rope and that way you can get a full ex uh, contraction as well. Now the second con of the slingshot bench press ties in with the first con is uh, basically the way this resistance profile is being changed it's gonna make it not so great for raw bench press strength carryover. So when you have less tension in the bottom position, you know you're not gonna have as big of pecs, you're not gonna have as big of front delts, your triceps might be just as big or almost as big. And I know that Matt Wenning says that the bench press should be a tricep dominant movement. And he may be correct when you're talking from a long-term health perspective, but if you want the highest bench press numbers, you know, if you're a power lifter, you know, you don't care about your health, you just want to dominate your goals. Using a style of bench press where you can maximally hypertrophy the pecs, that's the largest muscle involved in the bench press. So getting that large muscle, as large as it can be, is gonna give you the best overall strength numbers. So if you're barely using the slingshot bench press, maybe you're using it once in a while or maybe you know twice a month, something like that. It's not often enough to really affect your overall raw bench press strength. Now, if you're someone that relies on it too much and you're not doing barely any long pause bench press work or you know, say you're starting off with the slingshot every session, ideally you should be starting off with long pause bench work or like a long pause Larson and then moving on to your slingshot work afterwards. Because if you're just over relying on the slingshot and using that too much, uh, first of all, it kind of tucks your elbows for you. So the form and the cues are a little bit different. And personally, I have never used a slingshot, but I have to imagine it kind of feels like reverse bands where with that tension springing you out of the bottom, it's gonna be pretty hard to pause at all, let alone, you know, to a comp standard. Now, with all of that being said, there are actually a few benefits. You know, there's a few positive things that I have to say about the slingshot bench press. You know, they do have their place in time, 
They are the solution for some lifters, especially guys with shoulder and you know pec injury issues. Uh, that lightened load at the bottom could be exactly what they need to press in a somewhat specific way without any pain in the shoulder region. You know, that way it can be a bridge between say a football bar bench press and getting back to a comp bench press. Uh, you can put the slingshot with a standard bar in the middle. That way you can use a straight bar but still not experience any shoulder pain. And another way that it can help, you know, guys with shoulder injuries is that it forces good form. The tactile feedback and the pressure from the fabric are gonna keep everything tight and in place and they do force some tucking. You know, the slingshot is great for guys that have problems with overflaying their elbows, which is gonna put all the load right into that uh, AC joint. Now moving on to the last pro of the slingshot is gonna be that it boosts your confidence with heavy weights due to how it can, you know, overload. So, you know, your pecs may be pushing less weight out of the bottom, but at the top, you're holding weights that are heavier than you can normally handle. So this is gonna be great for you know, building mental confidence, uh, getting your hands and your forearms adapted to stabilizing these heavy loads. So once you approach them without the help of the slingshot, it's something your nervous system is already somewhat used to. So that way you are more prepared to give that weight your all rather than have your fearful mind holding you back. And that is all I had to say on this topic. If there's anything you want to contribute to the discussion on what is good and what is bad about the slingshot, make sure to drop a comment down below. Also drop some questions down below so I can make another Q&A video. Subscribe to the channel and have a great day.